In a slight deviation from the regular theme of this channel, this video brings us away from the wilds of the Great White North to one of the ancient cities of Old Christendom, to the birthplace of a little-known European legend. Many of the traditional nursery rhymes and fairy tales with which Western children are often inundated are tinged with a strain of the macabre. The nursery rhyme Ring Around the Rosy, for example, is popularly believed to be an allusion to some outbreak of bubonic plague that swept across England in centuries past, like the Great Plague of London or the infamous Black Death. The lullaby Rockabye Baby describes the likely injury and possible death of the eponymous infant who falls from the canopy of a tree when the branch supporting her cradle breaks. The famous German folk tales collected by the Brothers Grimm in the early 19th century are far darker than their modern whitewashed derivatives. Cinderella's wicked stepsisters mutilating their feet in order to fit them into the magic slipper, and the villainous witch being roasted to death in her own oven in the story Hansel and Gretel. And Humpty Dumpty, whose body is shattered beyond repair after a high fall, is not, despite popular perception, verbally portrayed as an egg. In keeping with this pattern, the beloved English nursery rhyme, The Muffin Man, has a surprisingly dark origin. Although conventional wisdom holds that the titular Muffin Man is probably based on a baker or a grocer who once practiced his trade on Drury Lane, a historic London street marking the eastern boundary of the city's west end, many modern video adaptations of the rhyme depict this character as an anthropomorphic muffin with arms, legs, a mouth, and eyes. Disturbingly, this quaint interpretation, which many of us might reflexively dismiss as the charming but baseless product of childlike imagination, is far closer to reality. In this video, we will explore the chilling true story of the Muffin Man. The historic event behind this nursery rhyme was alluded to in the 1675 book A Journey by Horse and Sail Throughout the Christian Kingdoms during the years 1667 and 1668 by Prussian scientist, soldier, and travel writer Gustavus von Winkelheim. In the spring of 1667, while touring the city of London, England, still reeling from the great fire of the previous year, Winkelheim met an elderly chemist and alchemist named John Hook, who invited him to spend an evening with him at his sister's home on Drury Lane. This gentleman, Winkelheim wrote in German, told me a most remarkable story pertaining to a baker by trade, who, prior to the event I shall shortly describe, lived on the very same street as that of the house in which we were presently occupied, which is called Drury Lane. This baker, as well as my host, lived under the rule of those joyless reformers who call themselves the Puritans, whose tenuous hold on the reins of England was broken by the return of the present King Charles II, restored after long exile to his rightful throne. In those days of austerity, the Puritans welcomed with open arms the sons and daughters of Israel, those roving peoples who were banished from that country on pain of death in the time of the Holy Wars in Palestine. Among the first to avail himself of his change of fortune was a Jew by the name of Gomez, who, with his family, made his abode in a house on Drury Lane, to which my host directed my attention. Binkelheim went on to explain how Gomez and the baker quickly became bitter enemies, their feud being occasioned by a romance that blossomed between their eldest children, which resulted in Gomez's daughter converting to Christianity. As retribution for this offense, Gomez solicited the services of a prominent rabbi who had also taken up residence in London, who was well versed in the arcane arts of the Jewish mystics. After consulting a variety of esoteric texts, the rabbi crafted a humanoid effigy from flour, water, and oil, using those ingredients in mockery of the baker's profession. The original German word which Binkelheim used to describe this pastry was mufa, which designates a small cake, vaguely resembling the breakfast food we know today as the English muffin. In a footnote in the 1895 English translation of the book, the editor proposed that the effigy was a sort of traditional Jewish pancake called a muffletta. Whatever the case, the rabbi inscribed the effigy with strange symbols and pronounced a series of incantations over it, thereby imbuing the dough with some terrible form of life. Although the figure itself could not speak, Pinkelheim wrote of this horrific creature. It understood what was said to it and commanded of it. By and by, it grew each day. Though very small at first, 
it ended its expansion by becoming as large as a man. The author went on to explain how the rabbi, at Gomez's request, instructed the monster to torment the baker every night as punishment for his son's actions. The creature so terrorized the craftsman that, after enduring several months of nightly intrusions, he fled to the country with his family, never setting foot in London again. Binkelheim concluded his anecdote by stating that, absurd though the tale may seem to educated readers, Hook assured him that several of his neighbors, whom he regarded as sober and respectable, claimed to have witnessed the creature quickly and methodically trudging down Drury Lane in the dead of night, apparently heedless of its surroundings, as if under the influence of some sort of spell. In the mid-late 17th century, the nursery rhyme The Muffin Man, now known and beloved by children throughout the English-speaking world, developed organically in London, perhaps serving as a warning against, or a reminder of, the mysterious, muffin-like automaton said to have once haunted Drury Lane. According to the Roud Folk Song Index, a collection of nearly 25,000 songs from English oral tradition, the rhyme had acquired its familiar tune by at least 1820. In addition to its contribution to Anglo culture, Binkelheim's story had a profound yet seldom acknowledged legacy in the travel writer's native Germany, which was outlined by American folklorist Dr. Avril Prima in her spring 1981 article for the Journal of the Commonwealth Folklore Institute. In 1875, Austrian playwright Heinrich Klinker wrote a theatrical tragedy based on the Muffin Man story, which, in 1924, was adapted into a silent film. In 1926, while speaking at a Nazi party meeting in Munich, Hitler's future Reich Minister of Propaganda, Dr. Joseph Goebbels, alluded to Klinker's play, characterizing the Muffin Man as the embodiment of the Judeo-Bolshevik threat to the Volksgemeinschaft, or German people. This metaphor was the subject of several papers written by members of the Reich Institute for German Volkskunde, an organization established for the purpose of justifying the Nazi ideology through the study of German folklore and survived well into World War II, evident in a derisive label which German soldiers applied to Jewish partisans active in German-occupied Belgium, namely Muffenkommandos. In the aftermath of World War II, as part of the denazification of Germany, Klinker's play was banned from public performance on both sides of the Iron Curtain, and in fact remains banned today. Incredibly, one final flourish to the saga of the Muffin Man was added one year ago to this very day. While appraising a 17th century chest in a home in Drury Lane, which had been handed down throughout the owner's family for generations, a British antiquarian discovered a false bottom, beneath which was a sheet of parchment, which proved to be the lost final page of Binkelheim's handwritten manuscript, a document which never made it into print. Curiously, the page bore only two words, 